Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today, I promise you some very interesting guitars. I've got two small packages over there and four instruments. Let's start with the main topic of today's episode. A guy has been looking for this guitar for the past 10 to 15 years. I forget. It's been a while since I was emailing this guy because it took a while for this thing to come in. So this is not a Gibson. It's not a Fender. I think it's actually a Jackson or something similar to that. But it was an anniversary model that he's been looking for forever because he wanted one back when he was younger. But the big kicker is he lives in Australia, so it's even harder to get this dealer exclusive limited edition anniversary model. However, he was on a guitar forum and somebody posted that their guitar center had just gotten this in. It still hadn't been posted online because it was going through guitar centers. No, it's not been stolen checks. So he was able to put this down on layaway, but then they're like, hey, we cannot ship this to Australia. So then he found me and my forwarding service and we made it all happen. This was a little bit tricky to get, but we ended up doing it anyways. It came from the uh, Pasadena Guitar Center. So inside here, all right, we've got some sort of a Jackson going on. This is actually pretty sweet. So if I remember correctly, this is a 25th anniversary model. And other than that, I really don't have too much to tell you about this thing, but it does have this really cool blue and black swirl finish going on. That's nice. Definitely could probably use a little bit of a polishing and cleaning. But as far as Jacksons go, these are pretty cool. Made in USA. It's got a really nice dark maple neck to it. Even got this little swoop down here. Still a bolt-on neck. Looks like Floyd Rose is really jacked up there. Okay, haven't seen a Floyd Rose set up like that. Oh my goodness, look at this. We get the little flip switches. So from the Gibson US-1 that utilizes a very similar system that turns each individual pickup on. So like neck, middle, and bridge. Or you can just have neck and bridge or whatever combination of these that you do want. But looking back here, it looks like 25th anniversary edition. This is number two of 46. So yeah, kind of an interesting guitar. I <laughs> wish I could tell you more about it. But hey, this case. This really reminds me of like the early 90s Fender cases. I mean, these are pretty much the exact same thing. As far as the butterfly latches go, one of them's even missing. That's a pretty nice little case. I know he was asking to keep the shipping costs down. Maybe we take the guitar apart and send it, but I think you might want this case, man. So I think I'll just find a way to repack it just like this and get him a much smaller box so he's not paying crazy fees to Australia. Because if you ever think your shipping cost is way too high, get yourself a smaller box or cut it down to size. For example, you have this box right here. Pretend it's bigger. If your guitar only comes up here and your box is like this big, cut it down to here, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money. Because it's not the weight of the box for guitars that makes them expensive. All of them are pretty much dim weighted to about 35 pounds anyways. It's all about the size. So in here is actually something I found on Reverb one night, but this is one of my favorite budget Gibsons ever created. And this is one of the custom colors, like not custom colors, special order type thing, but one of the more rare colors offered in the series. And it was advertised as mint condition. And if this thing truly is mint, it's going to be added into my personal collection because I've reviewed one of these before and it was a fantastic example, but it was heavily modified. So inside here, we have oh, a beautiful beast. There it is. This is the BFG Gator Green Edition. So the coolest BFG colors, in my opinion, are the Gator Green and the Ink Blue or Indigo Blue, whatever you want to call it. And besides this one being dusty, so far, I think it is actually pretty darn clean. So I think I will re-review and document this because my other one was, you know, modified and that was a long time ago and I'll need a day or two to put this thing on the workbench. But yeah, this thing, I'm going to put it in my personal collection. These things are nice. So as a little preview to that video, you've got a kill switch in here, which I believe is this one. So that turns all the pickups on and off. Then you've got your regular toggle switch down here. They call them barely finished guitars because you get all this you know, texture right here. The maple top has not been sanded flush and they've got like these almost satin-like finishes to them. It was very popular back in the day when these things were new for people to buy these, you know, strip the finish off, sand these all down, then make their own like Les Paul Studio project. But since so many of them got defaced like that, you know, people are getting nostalgic over 
over these old things. I mean, what? This one's a 2012. I mean, it's not that old. But you can find some younger ones. All right. There, there are a few impressions on the back of the neck, but I'm not going to let that worry me too much. And of course, you got to love these wooden knobs. So we'll learn more about this one another day. I just wanted to get it unboxed, make sure truss rod and stuff was good, which thankfully it is. Sadly, we don't have the original gig bag, but I'll probably just give it that smart wood case that I have, because I rather store my guitars in cases, and that smart wood hemp case is pretty cool. But anyways, our next guitar here actually comes from the legitimate PRS family of brands. That's not something we see every day on this show. But I actually bought this to help me make a video that is coming up. So let's go ahead and get this thing out so we know what I'm talking about. Inside this one sleeps. Ooh, I believe this one's called Inca Silver, Silver Sky. I mean, come on guys, if you're gonna buy a Silver Sky, you might as well get a silver one, right? <laughs> so, the PRS SE just came out. This is the full-on USA one. I wanted to give myself a refresher on what a PRS felt like, because the last time I've had one of these in the Silver Sky lineup, that was back when they did the Nebula, and then they also did the Lunar Ice one. So yes, indeed, I do plan to review the SE, but I picked up this one because, again, I just wanted to have this in my hand so I know how it felt, because those maple fretboarded ones were the last ones I had gotten, and they have that satin finish, whereas this is more of a gloss, which is what I like, and it's got that rosewood fretboard. So I don't think I'll do like a, a tone demonstration. I'm sure Anderton's or someone else probably did that already and did it better justice than I could do as a player but I thought I would pick this one up just for that. But this is a 2021 one if you want to do a new Guitar Day purchase on this, or if you want to be in line to be the next owner of this one after I release my SE, you can do so now on my website. You can just contact me for both the SE and this one. I went ahead and bought hard shell cases for these two just because that's how I am. I like hard shell cases. Nothing against these gig bags. They're actually pretty nice. It just depends. Are, are you more of a collector, somebody who stores their guitars in cases, or are you trying to go out and gig with things? So that's two gig bag guitars, one hard shell case. What is going to be in our fourth one? So over here, when I do my reviews and documentations of guitars, sometimes I just order two of them just in case. Because you never know when some lunatic is going to steal a truck full of guitars or when particular dealers will get things in stock. So having a backup order of a rare limited edition guitar is never a bad idea when you're in the review and demo business. Inside here, ah, I think this kind of gives it away, right? It's another Jerry Cantrell Wino Les Paul Custom. So this is that beautiful wine red Jerry Cantrell signature. This is one that's kind of grown on me the more and more I've known about it. Sure, it's a reissue of a 90s Les Paul Custom, and you can check out my full review and demo to get my thoughts on it at that time. But it does have some interesting specs. It was really expensive for what it was. However, I've got to say... I like the finish checking job on this one way better than my first one. I wish I could have had this for the review and demo. That's another reason why sometimes I'll buy two of these because each of these will be aged just a little bit differently. So it's nice to be able to choose which one you want to review and demo. But if you missed this video, what makes this one special besides being a signature is the fact that it has a piezo system in here. So you can get some acoustic sounds in here and you can blend that with your magnetic pickups too. But that is a really nice two piece maple top. In fact, let me grab my camera here just so you guys can really appreciate what I'm talking about here. So my last one just had one area that was dinged and then kind of filled in. This one's got a few more, but look at all that finish checking on here and the wood grain. That's what I'm really talking about. It's really tempting to maybe even keep this one back. Like, I like Jerry Cantrell, I like Alice in Chains, but I wouldn't necessarily consider myself an aficionado of their brand and their songs and things like that. So maybe this one doesn't speak as much to me as it would other people. But as a collectible piece, that's kind of nice. So I'm on the fence about this one. If the offer's right, I'll sell it. But I've got to say, this is a very nice example of one of these. They even took the time to get all the aging on the side. Check out the checking on the back. Cool. So, Gibson Factory guys, whoever worked on Jerry Cantrell number 66, pat yourself on the back. I really like this one. Oh, and obviously we've got all the cool case candy in here, COA and all that other good stuff. So let's go ahead and put all these guitars away now and check out a few small packages. So in our small mail pile, we'll start with this one. This is a upgrade to the show, at least hopefully. 
I purchased some of these from B and H Spider Checker 24. So if you notice, sometimes the color in this room it appears greenish. So hopefully using this color correcting chart thing right here will help us out with that in the future. So if I understand this correctly, you can use like your editing software. It notices these colors and it knows what they should be since they're overly saturated and then you can fix your camera's footage. So this is something my editor will be using to hopefully fix some of those issues. And we've also got a grayscale thing on the back. And secondly here, I actually have a gift from a viewer of the show. Now I don't have a PO box to publicly accept stuff from people, but Faisal here, he's like one of my number one private help session guys. So when he was building his collection, he used my services quite a bit. So he wanted to get me a Christmas present. And unfortunately the uh, company who is making this for me or whatever it is, I really don't know what it is. They got sick and it took time to get it around. And then here we are, late January, early February, we've got it. So let's see what did he give me as a Christmas present here. Feels like maybe a strap. And that it is. Oh, is it a dragon strap? Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, man. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> it's the snake pit snake. And on top of it, I think it's the doofy snake pit snake. <laughs> not like the correct one, because not all of these are like perfectly aligned. So he must have sent that photo of the fretboard of the fake pit to this artist who then painted it. Oh yeah, I like that. That's funny. Then of course we get Slash's name right here. Rock and Roll. And the actual snake pit guy right there. All right, thank you, Faisal. That is, that's fantastic. Like this is a really nice strap too. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.